Uh, we've asked political analyst uh, John Dadian to come in and join us here this morning. Uh, John, you're telling us the only polls that really matter here right now are the swing states, the battleground states. Absolutely, because that's the way our system is, electoral votes. You need to have very simple math. You need to count up to 270 electoral votes. And, for example, California is never going to change. Definitely going to go for Obama by a wide margin. And we figured a huge part of that percentage when you look at the national vote. And absolutely. So that, that has to be taken. Also, keep in mind, all these different polls have different methodologies, whether or not they do register voters versus likely to voters, et cetera. So uh, if you look at races, you know, for the past couple of decades, the numbers on Election Day sometimes are quite different from a poll taken just a few days before. Let's talk about the first debate that's expected to take place in Denver tonight. How crucial is this in those particular swing states? And the undecided voters? The way it's looking is extremely crucial because of the, it's so close within the margin error in almost all of those swing states. Uh, the, the clip that you just had is absolutely accurate. You don't want to make a mistake. Uh, if, if I asked you, ask the average person on the street, who won the debates in, in 92, 2000, nobody can tell you who won the debate, but if you ask, do you remember any famous gaffes? They could probably tell you the famous Ford gaffe of 76, famous uh, Dan Quayle comment. Uh, so, so those are the type of things people remember. Yeah, I'm looking at an article uh, that's referring back to the 02 race when uh, Romney was running for governor. And about the same time leading into the race, he was behind by about the same percentage, maybe even more. And he switched tactics. He went from being kind of the statesman that made him seem maybe a little bit aloof to some people, a little bit stiff, to going on the attack. Is tonight the night? Uh, not necessarily, because keep in mind, uh, although we're about to a little bit more than a month out, you have a total of three presidential debates. This is probably going to get the largest audience, you know, conventional wisdom, is, but he still has those other two. So if he goes too much on the attack tonight, the president will come back in the next two. So he has to be a little careful. I'd look for a zinger or two. Okay. Let's talk about the topics that could potentially trip either one of these candidates up. What are they? Well, there's six topics tonight that they're cramming into 90 minutes, but half of those, three of those, are going to be on the economy. And then the last one's going to be on government, which I think is a chance for Romney to hit it out of the ballpark, saying, you know, don't you think we have too much government? And I think that's going to resonate with the middle class. But on the economy, I think he's going to invoke the ghost of Ronald Reagan and say, are you better off? now than you were four years ago. How is the president expected to respond to some of these questions about the economy? How does, what's his solution and Because here? so far up to this point, as Heather and I were talking earlier, the unemployment's at 8.1 percent or thereabouts, maybe effectively even higher. Uh, the economy's not doing great. And yet, do people even care? They don't seem to be holding the president accountable for that. His numbers are still high. He, basically, his rationale is, it's working slower than I thought. <laughs> Give us time to work. We're on the right track. Let's not go back. I'm amazed after four years, they're still blaming the Bush administration. As recently as the Vice President Biden made a comment about that, that uh, he, he meant to talk about the Bush administration, not the fact that the last four years <laughs> the middle class is under attack. Speaking of middle class, though, that seems to be the sore subject with Romney, though, in that particular video that was leaked in the 47 percent. How is he going to handle some of those questions that could come out tonight? Oh, I, I think he can handle it pretty fine. I think it's campaign. The one thing that I've been watching for in the primaries, I thought the Romney's uh, campaign made some mistakes against his Republican rivals. What I've seen in the general election, if they've done what they need to do in a tight race, and that is they've had a good response team, and they come back with that, and they 47 percent right away. You know, that was, if you look at his full comments, it was kind of stretched out in the media. So I don't see that as a problem. Here's the thing that the Obama team is very, very nervous about, and that is just we're all human. By nature, President Obama likes to explain things. He likes to go in depth, something that Newt Gingrich had a problem with uh, during the primaries. Right. So that's what you're going to work for. Tonight, it's got to be crisp, got to be clear. I hate to use this word, but it's got to be in sound bites. Right. You know, that's very interesting that you would, you would mention that because, you know, when we talk to people outside of, you know, the news desk here and they, they ask for a tip or two, uh, on, on how to approach the media, we always tell them that. We say, you know, you, you need to speak in sound bites. If you want your message to be clear, don't give the media anything other than exactly what you want to give them, and then stay on that message and just keep repeating it. Several pollsters will have focus groups tonight that will follow them and live with the speech going on, and they do these little graphs uh, as far as people are listening or not. After a topic start, starts, about five to seconds later, it starts dropping off. you got to grab the attention while it's there. Keep right moving. off the top there. Political analyst John Dadian, thank you so much for coming in. I think most of us will be watching tonight to see what happens, and I would love to hear what you have to think after the debate's over. It's on tonight. Okay, it's on. John, <laughs> John loves this time of year. Thanks, John. <laughs> coming up in our 7 o'clock hour, the debate.